My name is Catherine Marr. I grew up in a smallish town in Wilton, Connecticut, um, right outside of New York City. And I went to school, I graduated from New York University, but along the way I studied in Egypt for some time. That was a very important experience for me. I moved there when I was 18 years old, which meant that it was one of the, not the first time I'd ever been in another country, but it was the first time I'd lived on my own. Um, it was very formative as an experience. It taught me a lot about what it means to um, live in the world independently, to learn through other people, to um, try to learn a foreign language, and to live within the context of a different culture. Um, it also instilled a deep love of the Middle East uh, in me, and so I spent the next few years studying that at university, uh, studying the Middle East in uh, Islamic history and Arabic. I ultimately ended up living in a number of Middle Eastern countries. Uh, I studied in Syria for some time. I spent time in Lebanon, um, time in Tunisia, and then worked in a few others as well. Um, and after graduating from New York University, I went and I worked originally did a number of internships on focused on the Middle East, but found my way and worked at a bank for a very brief period of time um, in order to really, so that I had the opportunity to go back overseas. Uh, it was an opportunity for me to take a job that would allow me to travel and live in more countries. And so I lived in London in the UK and I lived in Dusseldorf in Germany and then I lived in Toronto in Canada. And eventually I realized that I realized fairly early on that was not the way I wanted my career to go, so I joined, moved back to New York and I joined UNICEF, where I was one of the founding members of what became known as the Innovation Team, where we were very focused on the use of technology to improve people's lives. And that was a really sort of fundamental transformational moment for me. Um, from that period on, that has really been the focus of my work, is the intersection of empowerment and the use of technology as a tool to do that. Uh, in ways that improves communities, improves inclusivity, improves transparency, deepens participation. Um, I loved working with UNICEF and I got to travel all over and work with many different communities around the world on a number of projects on everything from maternal health to HIV and AIDS prevention to youth participation and um, ultimately I became interested in digital rights and improving and protecting the rights of people through technology because it is such an important medium through which we communicate and it's through that work that I found myself joining the Wikimedia Foundation because I believe that the Wikimedia Foundation in represents as part of a broader movement many of those things that I find valuable in the world, something that is global and inclusive, uh, something that uses a medium technology as a tool to connect all of us, but is really uh, centered around a higher, more aspirational value, which is sharing knowledge with the world in a way that empowers people, that allows them to participate, that gives them agency, and hopefully improves our lives uh, and uh, the condition of the world around us. Okay, thank you. And your birthday? My birthday? <laughs> My birthday is April 18. <laughs> uh, so I'm really excited to be able to work on supporting women and uh, people whose gender identity is not represented as much on the Wikimedia projects. I think that it'll be one part of the work that we're focusing on. It's really important for the Wikimedia projects to be an inclusive environment for everyone. And right now we know that that means that women are underrepresented, but it's not just women, it's also people of alternate gender identity. And so I think that it's definitely something I'm excited about and excited to work on and to support our community on. And, and insofar as it's possible to be you know, an advocate for these communities um, or even just sort of a role model as a leader, I'm really excited for that opportunity. That we know that it has been a challenge and that we really appreciate how much work and passion you continue to have in the projects, but also the passion for changing them and making the projects into the projects that we want. I think that the thing that I am so excited about is that I just attended the Wiki Women's Lunch here in uh, as an Olario, and it is about twice the size as the lunch that I attended in Mexico, or at least it feels that way. 
Um, it does feel as though there is an opportunity for us um, to take advantage of a desire for some sort of awareness and change within the community. It's something that I've heard a lot over the course of the past couple of days. Um, an appetite to address issues of toxic culture. Um, we are hearing that this is something community is interested in the foundation taking on. The foundation is interested in working on it and we know that we have the support of our board of trustees. And so what I would ask is that as we start to work on building the community culture that we want, that we have your support and your voice in that and that we can be more of a support to you. I also think that there are some communities that are still very young and um, from what I hear very friendly communities such as our Wikisource community and our Wikidata community and I would love to see that those communities continue to grow in a healthy way um, thanks to the leadership of women in those communities but those communities discussion. overall. Uh, at the moment, the way that we've been approaching, addressing gender in terms of participation on the sites has been through building friendly spaces, building safe communities, building places where women feel comfortable participating, and that's been through the work of our support and safety team, um, who is represented at the executive level by Maggie Dennis, uh, who is our head of community engagement. As you can tell by her name, Maggie is a, is a woman. Um, and this is something that she cares very passionately about. It's not her sole focus, but it's something that she's really interested in working on and it's something that I'm working on with her. We see ourselves as working as partners over the coming year to address some of these issues. I don't think it ha lives in the executive team alone though. I actually believe that for change to truly come, it needs to come by being culture change. And so we can role model what we believe is important. Um, but what we're also looking for is the rest of the organization at the Wikimedia Foundation to also support gender inclusivity within our work and in our culture internally because we believe that the foundation also needs to reflect the culture um, that we want to see in the community and in the movement. And so it starts at the top maybe, but it certainly needs to be all the way through the organization in order for us to um, aspire to it being all the way through. Yeah, I was very surprised when I came to the Wikimedia Foundation that how um, self-contained a culture we are. I had previously worked with other social movements, other activist movements, um, other uh, movements around social change, and one of the differences is that any organization that I was at was actually part of a bigger organization, uh, bigger movement, and there were many organizations working on different goals. Um, with the Wikimedia movement, it feels as though we are actually just Wikimedia generally is represented at our conferences and our conversations. We are a big movement, there are lots of organizations within it, but ultimately we focus on one thing. And I do believe that we're healthier when we have more partners. I do believe that we're healthier when we're open. I believe that we're healthier when other people see why their work is important in our work and our work is important in their work. We don't have any specific plans to engage in any one conference or another, but I would really encourage that we as a movement um, are constantly thinking about how do we create more partnerships and alliances. And I will say that I think some of our affiliates are doing this far better than the Wikimedia Foundation. I spent this morning talking with Wikimedia, someone from Wikimedia Italia, or one of our hosts here, and we talked about the collaboration between OpenStreetMaps, the Open Mapping Project, and the Wikimedia movement. And there are very strong overlaps there. We know that there are similar examples in other places around the world. I'd love to see more of that within our movement, within our community, and I think it's an opportunity for the Wikimedia Foundation to also think about how we as an institution become more open and think about partnership in a broader sense.